Basketball! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Good Morning Let's Basketball. This is now season two. It's been a long journey. It's been a long year of basketball and some non-basketball during the summer. So we're glad to be back, and we're glad to be talking about some of these really interesting topics with you guys. Uh, make sure if you guys haven't already subscribed or listened in on Spotify, Apple Music, or any of our other medias, that you make sure and do that, as well as drop a like down below in the video and give us a follow if you feel you like what we're talking about. Last night, in a dead of sleep, I was awoken by a Woj bomb, and we have some really interesting things to talk about. Today is October 31st, so for those of you that have been paying attention to the free agency block and trade rumors and all this other things we got some big topics ahead of us so kevin do you want to kick us off with our first one yeah so like danny said we got hit with some great news last night james harden has finally been traded from the philadelphia 76ers after they pretty much just didn't allow him to play so harden was traded finally traded to the los angeles clippers the clippers will be receiving james harden and pj tucker seems like tuck can't get away from harden don't know if he loves that or hates it but don't really got a choice do we and the 76ers have received Nick Batum, Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, K.J. Martin, draft picks. As well, they did waive Danny Green. Basically, Ken Baysmore part two. No. So, <laughs> yeah, who cares? He can even find somewhere else to play. I'm sure he will. But Harden finally got traded. After all this time, after all this mess of shitting on the owner, sitting out of camp and games, he finally got what he wanted. The Clippers were the team that was stupid enough to get him and uh, trade for him. I, I don't really think it's that bad. I kind of just like hating on the situation. It's just kind of funny. It's it's entertaining to me. But yeah, man, these new look Clippers uh, projected starting lineup that I kind of put together in my head and I saw all over Twitter is Westbrook, Harden, PG, Kawhi, and Ivica Zubats. Now, kind of just thinking about this lineup and like where the Clippers are at right now, it doesn't seem like they gave up too much or not necessarily like what they wanted. I know they didn't want to get rid of man and they didn't clearly, they didn't want to get one of their stars or Westbrook and they were able to stay on the team, but I still have kind of doubts that this team will be able to make it. Yeah. Far in the playoffs, obviously, you know, we know who James Harden is, what he can do, but can the rest of these guys be able to pull their weight in the playoffs I also have a kind of a question about the spacing between the Clippers too. Like who's going to be mostly have the ball in their hand. I'm going to assume it's going to be James Harden and Westbrook's just going to be doing whatever he does on offense, which is, you know, be kind of a shit house, grab those boards, be kind of a outlet man. But I kind of want to know what you guys think about this new look Clippers team. Do you think we're going to find some success or is it going to be a, a shitty four all-star team? I think if it was 2016, this would be a really good team. But probably right the now, team ever. Yeah, I mean, right now it looks good on paper, but we got to see if they can stay healthy, if they can mesh together with all those personalities and and their all their games as well. I, I just think it's going to be a lot of ISO play, and I don't know if you can if all those guys could average 20 on the team. You know, uh, I'd like to point out that. Paul George's touches are already down from 70 to 50 this season. So he's already <clears throat> he's already touching the ball less. And now that Harden's there, it's going to drop even more. So I think the Clippers offense, having the ball in Paul George's hands is better than James Harden's. But also something I did want to mention too is the Clippers did give up another first round pick. And that's kind of an all-in move because they did lose a lot of those picks trading for Paul George and Kawhi in the first place. So now giving up another one for Harden, this is definitely a, an all-win or like winner bust situation. And a good thing for Clippers fans is Marcus Morris is gone. So that's that's always good for them. I know they, they sent Morris death threats because <laughs> they think he's useless, but that's just a couple things to to throw into the mix before we decide how this is going to end up. Yeah, for me, I 
kind of have said this already going into this season i think that the biggest question of who's going to be in that championship game is who wants it more and i know that every year you know a lot of teams want it but it's it's kind of rare for so many teams to go into a season with the expectation that it's either we're a contender and we're in that big game or like bust basically i think when you think across the league about how many teams really want to win it this year with Lakers, Clippers, or sorry, Lakers, Suns, Warriors, and then on the East, Heat, and there's a countless more. The Nuggets. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the Nuggets definitely want to, you know, win this again, I think. But then you look at this Clippers team, and obviously, like Victor said, you know, in the, a few years ago, this team would have been insane. But now, you know, a lot of them are getting up there in age, and Paul George, Westbrook, even maybe you can make an argument for Kawhi aren't the same player that they once were. So all these are, you know, valid questions, but I think that this is a a team that hasn't gotten a chance. Really a lot of their players haven't gotten a chance to play in the finals and and you know, win a finals especially. The only one that has experience in that department is is really Kawhi. So with that being said with such elite scorers as James Harden and Paul George and even Westbrook on occasion. I think that this team has the necessary experience, skill, and a lot of other factors that could put them in that big game. But most importantly, I think it's the fact that this is really a one last hurrah for a lot of those guys. I mean, if if this situation doesn't work out, Paul George, Westbrook, and, and Harden, I think, can pretty much kiss their chance at winning a championship goodbye. So, yeah. Oh, this is their I last think, year for sure. I think what this means, I feel like this next season is really going to determine Harden's future in the NBA. Like, he's he's on a team where he wants to be now. He has all of these stars around him, kind of adding to already the already all-star and Hall of Famer players that he's played with in his career. If he doesn't get it, if they don't get something done either this season or next season, it's going to just be really hard for me to imagine James Harden being able to accomplish another trade or being targeted in free agency. So I think a lot of this weight is going to fall on Harden's shoulders. Like I said, he's really playing for his, I'll say, eligibility to be able to find a team in the later stages of the, in the later stages of his career. I kind of see him taking on more of that point guard role on this team. I mean, he kind of did that when he was in Philly, a distributor. Now that they had they have their two scores in Kawhi and PG, they can both be twenty five point per game scores, but you can't have a third. I think that'll be very hard for James Harden to be able to score as much points as he did in the previous teams that he was on. So that's the way that I can find this Clippers team succeeding is James Harden really buying into that playmaking role, kind of just leaving that 25, 30 point per game scorer in the past. It's just not really needed on this team. So like I said, if he tries to go out there and be the main scorer, which I don't think he will, it definitely won't work in my eyes, but that playmaking role, I think it could, they could definitely find success with it especially with what they have coming off the bench too. They'll probably have Tuck coming off the bench. They got Man coming off the bench. Something to mention too is it's almost like, like I'm just going to draw the parallel here. When he got to Brooklyn, he was paired up with two scores and he wanted to be that playmaking role. And then we saw obviously Kyrie and Katie go down. They only played, what was it, 16 games together or so. Like and 12. I yeah, I feel like I feel like this role that he's in currently is what he wanted in Brooklyn, but couldn't have because of the injuries to Katie and Kyrie. And you know, the reason why he got traded is because I mean, he's he said vocally it wasn't basically what he agreed to. He didn't want to be the main guy. He didn't want to have to carry the back when Katie and Kyrie were out. So, I think that I think him fitting right into this role is kind of of, of what he wanted in Brooklyn. But that I is mean, true. I'm kind of glad you brought that up. But we have to remember he's on a team where we have the two kings of load management. Yeah, I was so, about to say that. I'm not going to say if if Paul George and Kawhi sit out. It's going to be when they sit out because it's going to happen. Obviously, it's 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 not going to change. He's going to have to step in and kind of take on more of a scoring role, and we could see more drama and bullshit go on hopefully it doesn't but we got to remember he's on a team that has also two players that struggle to play the game of basketball honestly this is kind of I don't even know if this is going to make sense but I heard people saying like who's going to get in the way of this team what's going to get in the way of this team 
the only thing that can get in the way of this team succeeding is game days. Honestly, <laughs> are these motherfuckers <laughs> actually going to be on the court or are they going to be sitting on their ass? Hey, the only the thing that's going to be this team, the only is, is availability. We say it all the time. So yeah, the only team, the only thing that's going to get in the way of this team succeeding is themselves and game days. Like that's, y'all can't tell me I'm I hit the spot on that one. <laughs> no, you did. You did hit the spot, but the CBA, the CBA, I hate to be that guy that's like, Oh, the CBA, but the CBA did, did make new rules for loan management. So we may see, I doubt we're going to see a complete end to it, but I think we will see it less just to kind did of you balance get, your take a bit. Did you I believe so that? too, but we also have injuries in, uh, in, in place here too. You know, Kawhi and PG have that pass. They missed time last year. Hopefully they stay healthy. I want to see these four. I, I actually really want to see what these four can do on the court. Like there's nothing I want to see more this season than to see what this team can do. If I was a 76ers fan, I would probably be glad for, and like thankful for what I got out of that that Clippers trade for sending Harden to the LA because honestly, I feel like his value has been diminishing season after season. And after he keeps requesting these trades, like how could you trade for him when you don't know as a franchise if you're gonna get that James Harden that you're expecting, that name that you're paying for, if you're gonna get that value for him. So I feel like what the 76ers have got in return for James Harden was pretty good because they had to give up a whole lot for getting Harden on the Sixers. And I'm surprised that Harden kind of wanted to leave the 76ers. I thought he liked it there. He originally wanted to play with Embiid. But I think it's a little bit more about the Clippers owner. or I mean, 76ers owner, Daryl Morey. So I don't, I don't know the full details with that maybe it's because of the contract that he didn't get promised but there might be more i I think the biggest going back well first of all i just want to say that i i think i've been seeing some recent rumblings about how Embiid being more to blame for that team not really finding success in the last few years has been a should, should be talked about more but anyway um what i wanted to bring up again was the load management thing I think that if we're all in agreement that this seems like it's kind of a last hurrah for a few of these guys on the Clippers, I I would imagine that they would try to play more games. You know, Miles said that the, the CEA has like created new rules around load management, but obviously NBA players and their agents and their staff are going to be able to kind of finagle their way around that. But I don't think they're going to want to is kind of my point this this year. I think that more likely than not, these guys are going to want to be on the floor playing some great basketball and hopefully taking their team a little farther than we think possible. But we'll see. Nick Batum is a tough loss, though. He's solid for them. But also a tough game. <laughs> yeah. But no, dude, what they got back think- on. Covington's a good pickup. He spent some time in Philly and like the, I would say the prime of his careers, but prime of his career. It seems like they went very forward forward heavy with this trade with getting Batum, Morris, and Covington. Shit, and even KJ Martin, he plays forward. But I don't really see Morris finding too many minutes on this team. He's kind of been like that the past few years of his career. But yeah. he, he was pretty valuable to that Clippers team when they first formulated with uh, Kawhi and PG. And even during the bubble, like he was a very good player for them. He's always but, been so underrated, I thought, dude. He's exactly. good. Or he was he's, good. He's... He was good. Like I said, maybe he – nah, never mind. I don't see him finding minutes on this team. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit. So did you guys see with Korkmaz, did you guys see that news with him? He said he requested a trade, and both the 76ers and the Clippers said no. He's been trying to get out <laughs> of Philly for so long, and they just won't. they just won't get him out of there. I actually saw that the team that are the front runners to land Furkan Korkmaz at the trade deadline, Chicago Bulls. So yeah, it's just, poetic. It's poetic. It's just fucking <laughs> ridiculous at this point. Like they they need to they need to blow up that team, that piece Dude, of shit that's team. Crazy. He uh, requested they, that trade so long ago. <laughs> no one cared, bro. Like it just yeah, man. Just just wait till you're a free agent, man. No one's gonna put effort into trading you. Do you even think he'll get signed? <laughs> I'm sure he will, but like, I feel like there's just a, you have to be a certain level of a player to ask for a trade, you know? And Furkan Korkmaz just isn't that. Apparently, he's not even near that. What'd you say, Daniel? I said, apparently, the Bulls think so. 
bro they they want just anybody that they they think a lot you know yeah. <laughs> they're the graveyard yeah they, 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 they wanted the they wanted Harden. I'm glad they did not get him. Chicago yeah, the... sports needs to be investigated for league manipulation in football and in fucking basketball. Just just putting their fans through absolute menace the past decade of our lives. It's just is getting kind of annoying. It is. I I, I just want to see them make one big move or like guess... decently big move by the trade deadline, whether it's guess... getting rid of DeRozan, Levine, or Vuce. Don't really give a shit who it is at this point. Just one of them. Just see what we can get. It's gonna. Well, it's gonna be DeRozan. They just resigned. I think it's. Boost. I no, think it's was... gonna be. I think it's gonna be Levine to Miami, or Philly. Yeah, he, he's the front runner for Philly. Levine to Philly and or OG and Anobi. I just. I don't think it would make sense to if I think DeRozan is gone either way because this is the last year of his contract. So if and if he's... they don't move him, he's gonna. I assume he's going to re-sign somewhere else for for nothing. So, and he's kind of getting up there in age too. But I feel like Zach Levine also isn't the answer for Chicago, and they can probably get a little bit more for him than they would DeRozan. So I feel like that's kind of where their heads at. I think trade that's both, why I would... man. <laughs> Shit, bro. Honestly, yeah. at this point, why the fuck not? Like, yeah, blow it up. Just and get, boost. just get a, just get a a good amount of picks in there, maybe a few solid young players. Why not? Yeah, I feel like I feel like everybody in their mom knows that they should have blown this shit up this year. The fact that they're running it back is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like they're kind of just they're kind of just waiting to see what happens with Lonzo honest honestly. What when he comes back, how they're gonna be able to function. But by the time he comes back, like it's a possibility that one of those three are not even there anymore. So Round of applause for a good try by the Bulls. It was it was going really well until Lonzo got hurt, but I think they're too hesitant to just give it up, man. But good job. Ju- it was a good try. Like we can accept it was a good try. It was. They were first and second at All Star break two years ago, mm-hmm. which kind of which blows my mind thinking about it now. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts. If Levine or OG Ananobi went to the Seventy Sixers. And Embiid is still there. Do you think that could help them make a potential final contender team? No. If I was Philly, I would probably target OG and Anobi more than Zach Levine because they have Tyrese Maxey, who we're going to talk about later in the show. And he's having an amazing season to start so far. So I feel like adding Levine is kind of just saturating the scoring potential on this team because you also do have Joel Embiid, who averaged 33 last year. Yeah. So having a, a guy like you, OG and Anobi can fit on any team, and he'd be a great addition to the starting lineup on top of what they already received. I'd say he's one of the better on-ball defenders in the league, so he could definitely help this team out a lot. As far as winning a finals, will they, will they be able to take down Milwaukee and Boston? I think they can make it a little bit more competitive, but it, it just in my in my brain, it doesn't process that they'd make the finals. Yeah, OG, so I agree. OG is so much more of a target. I don't know why the Sixers would go after Levine because Levine's either. Levine's main trade is scoring, and they literally have one of the top scorers in the league on their team already and a breakout young star who can score the ball. So, like, I don't know why they would go after Levine because he can't play defense and he can't play make. So, I don't know, man. I feel like Harden would be a better fit than Levine there, personally. I I don't really disagree, but I feel like if they were to acquire Levine, then they would almost have to get rid of Maxi at this point. I mean, the Bulls are going to want something in return for Levine. But I feel like Maxi just fits a lot better than Levine does. He's a lot less ball dominant than Zach Levine is, and he's a little. I'd say he's. I'd say he's a little bit more consistent than Zach Levine is too. I would love for the they just had fifty one the other night. Yeah, because he's a great young player. I mean, Levine did just have 51 the other night, but piss on it, hey, you know. They assist, probably though. give up give up Kobe White, maybe, because there's no way you can have Io, Kobe, and Maxi on the same roster, right? And I, I kind of – I think Kobe White's time is up, man. I think they need to dish I f- him. I feel like they're just going to let Kobe White walk, you know, whenever his contract ends. Really? I think he has I mean, some value. I think he's a pretty solid scorer. 
he does, but he's just been on their like trade market for so long now and nothing's happened to, at this point. Like you might just have to let it go, you know? Yeah. I do think Io has, has a lot of upside potential though. I do like the idea of them keeping him. Yeah, no, they definitely should. They should definitely buy into Io a lot more. Tory Craig though. Tory Craig was a solid pickup. I wasn't mad at that. What I was mad at was Derek Favors. I remember I sent you that on Instagram, and I was like, yes, we found it. We got Derek Favors on the squad now. Ain't no one stopping that shit. Bro, how old is Derek Favors? <laughs> he's got I, he's probably 37. Old, right? <laughs> That's he's, what if I had to guess. I don't know. That's insane, dude. Did I don't you see think Drummond broke Chet, though? That's something to be happy about. I did see that. Oh. They, they also... Hey, he's 32. They also, they also had a players only meeting after that game, after the first game of the season. Told Billy Donovan to get the fuck out the locker room. And he listened. He listened. He got out. That's crazy. I'm surprised he's still their coach. I think he's yeah. projected to be the first fired coach for the season. <laughs> Jim Boylan, welcome back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot yeah. about his ass. We need to bring Hoiberg back. No, uh, no, please, no. Dude, at this point, can, yeah. you, can the team do much worse? Yeah, I feel like I feel like at this can point, can it get worse? Hoiberg is just as good as Billy Donovan at this point in time of this Bulls roster. Fuck it, bring him in. <laughs> bring in the Bears think... head coach Eberflus. See if he knows a thing or two about a pick and roll. Probably yeah. does, honestly, more so than fucking he knows about football. Oh God. Hey, I, honestly, I think the only thing that's enjoyable from watching the Bulls games this season is Stacy King's commentary. The tie your shoes chat after Andre Drummond crossed them up was hilarious. And then when Alex Caruso hit that game winner, he was like, turn the AC up. <laughs> you know, Stacy King has been a legend for Chicago. Yeah, for yeah. Many, I miss the years. give me the hot sauce, bro. But Chicago just ha- hasn't had a knockdown shooter like that in so long. Like Corver esque. Yeah. You know, I think the last Kirk time we used that was when Nikola Mirotic was on the team. Dude, that's yeah, crazy. I mean. Just on an, an off topic note, Nikola Mirotic could have gotten re signed for a great three year, it was like three or $60 million contract. And he Spain. just went back to the Spanish League. <laughs> he just didn't re sign. He just didn't fuck the with NBA. the NBA like that. Shoot. It seems like a lot of players don't, to be honest. <laughs> if they. If overseas p- paid like M- the way the NBA did, I feel like we'd see a lot of these players overseas go play over there. Yeah. Rather instead than the NBA, which would be crazy. But I don't think that's something the NBA really has ever has to worry about the amount of money they have. Quick question. Let's just get some feedback. How does uh, Nick Patoom coming to the 76ers affect Mo Bamba's legacy, though? <laughs> Mo Bamba is yet to be unlocked on this 76ers roster. If he didn't get it before. I don't think he's getting it after. I'm surprised um, Burrow's still in the league. Let's be honest. Yeah, me too. He's a very underwhelming draft pick. For how is Orlando. he seven? He's like seven three with a three point shot, and he sucks. Like, how is that even? His contribution to society so far has been that song, <laughs> and that's it. Oh God, <laughs> it went dumb though. Most people that know that song probably don't even know who Mo Bamba is. Like, yeah, he's a basketball player that can tell you that, but you know what else? Can they can they even tell you that? Honestly, I feel like I feel like a lot of people can't tell you who Mo Bamba is. But I feel like people know that because of word of mouth. Like they all like guys all like, who, what is a Mo Bamba? You know? <laughs> oh, it's actually a human. <laughs> so some interesting change made to the Golden State Warriors lineup. Beginning of the season, we all had questions of what the starting lineup was going to look like with Chris Paul being added to the team. But well, he did start. He wasn't the starting five at the beginning of the season. But now that Draymond Green is back, they did move Chris Paul to the bench. And he is now coming off the bench for the Golden State Warriors. So they're running a lineup of Curry, Clay, Draymond, Wiggins, and Kevin Looney. This honestly caught me by surprise. I felt like they were going to bring Looney off the bench and have Chris Paul in that starting lineup. But to me, it kind of makes sense. Because Chris Paul doesn't necessarily fit the play style of the Warriors. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because sometimes I think the Warriors can get really too ahead of themselves and play too fast. 
And Chris Paul is really good at slowing the game down and getting them more in sets and more of a pick and roll. And I feel like that's going to be very a lot more effective with him coming off the bench in that second unit than it would having him in that starting lineup with that faster play style. So I felt like that was a pretty good move, bring him off the bench. We're definitely going to see how that how effective that is and how it executes in these next few weeks. I mean, they did just make that change to that lineup. But coming off the bench, you'll have Kaminga there. He'll have a decent score with them. Obviously, Clay and Wiggins and Curry are going to kind of alternate with that second unit with the rest times. But I feel like this is a pretty good move. Uh, a lot of people were kind of skeptical about it when they first brought it off the bench. Obviously, we don't know how it's going to execute yet because it just happened. But I, I kind of like what they were thinking with this because he is able to slow the game down a little bit. And I feel like the Warriors can get a little bit too run and gun heavy at times. If you've ever watching Warriors games, that's what I see at least. I do. I do. Okay. I agree with you on the front that I think it's going to work. I disagree on the front that it wasn't working before though. I think pairing an elite pass first point guard with two of the best on ball or off ball players of all time. It's hard for that to not work watching their games. I think, I think honestly, he just from the eye test, I think he seamlessly fit, but to each his own, I'm not going to start an argument over it because that's not what we're here for. But Coming off the bench, I do agree that Chris Paul does slow down the offense. And I think that having like Kaminga with him, I feel like there's a lot of potential for Kaminga in a pick and roll as like a lob threat. Obviously, he's not the he's not the tallest guy, but he is the most athletic guy on the floor for them a lot of the time. So I feel like that could definitely have a lot of potential. But, you know, I I hate to say it, but I do like their backup point guard, that draft pick. What is it, Budevsky? What is his name? You guys know who I'm talking about? Uh, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Oh, sorry. Pod, it's right here. Pods, Podzemski, I'm going to say. But I do like him. I liked his role because he does play bench minutes for them. Obviously, Chris Paul going to the bench is going to take away from that. But they also have a knockdown shooter in Moody who's going to be there too. And I think it's going to be good for their younger guys to develop for sure, but specifically Kaminga and Moody because they need those guys to step up if they're going to have a chance at returning to the finals this year for sure. So also just having the veteran presence in the in the backup lineup I think is a no-brainer. That's a good idea. I think one of the biggest things that went into the decision-making probably for Chris Paul coming off the bench is this question that going into the season I think we all had of is it going to be better to let Curry be Curry on the court and be that point guard that is able to do pretty much I'm not going to say everything but a lot of things on the court or would it be better to have another you know elite NBA point guard giving him more of an opportunity to not only get open but to to create shots for himself and and to do other things along that but you know, just looking at the first few games with Curry, I think he's averaging like, I think, I think he's averaging like over 30 right now. And obviously it's the first four games this season, but he's had good performances. He's, you know, been looking in form and, you know, I I just think when it comes to that decision of, of whether we need Chris Paul to come off the bench or not really just came down to how good is Curry going to be this year. And I think, you know, last three games have kind of proved that he's still the same point guard we've seen win in the past. So if Chris Paul can take kind of that off the bench, six man kind of role, I think that the Warriors will be in a lot of better shape going into this season, just because we know that we have seen in the past, their starting lineup, obviously very strong. And then their backups usually kind of have a little bit of a struggle. So Hopefully Chris Paul can kind of turn that around for the team and, and have them be a good overall form team, no matter what people they have in. Yeah, I, I do like Chris Paul coming off the bench just because it's going to make their team a lot more deeper when they play against teams with weaker benches. So just having a, a player like Chris Paul coming off the bench is insane to think about. And he's definitely going to help guys, like you said, Kuminga with the pick and roll situation be a lob threat like that. I really like that. I think that Kuminga is going to have a pretty good year this year. They already started off the season pretty hot too. I think they're three and oh right now. Yeah. They're three and one, my bad. 
just we'll see how they the season goes for them. I think they'll finish the top five seed. One thing I did want to bring up is our beloved NBA analyst, Charles Barkley, made a statement on uh, television the other day and said that the Warriors are the fourth best team in California. Is that all, facts? All sports or an NBA? Bro, if it NBA, was all bro. sports, it would be like... It's a NBA, Daniel. Okay, well, obviously that's stupid. Is it, though? Fair How crazy of a statement is They that? beat the Kings like, last year. All of those teams right now. If Harrison Barnes hits that wide open three, though, would the Warriors have advanced? Last year in the playoffs, I know you know a game I'm talking about. <clears throat> I mean, who knows? That 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 Kings team looks strong against anyone. So that you know that that was that, a, that was also the first time the Kings have made the playoffs, and and they're playing Fox is already arguably in his prime. Same with Sabonis, but I feel like those guys are another step this year. Plus Monk, Murray was a rookie. Now he's got experience. Um, oh. Barnes Barnes is still their vet, but. Got Davion Mitchell. Um, yeah, like they, Herder. you know, and yeah, I mean, and the Warriors are, the Warriors, I mean, we've been saying this forever. The Warriors are getting older, but I think if that series was played again, I think the Kings win this year. I think it's significant enough improvement for the mm -hmm. Kings will, will win that series. And they almost had them last year. Like I said, they yeah. got to take a, the, the Warriors did take them to seven. But all right, so we've established that the Kings are probably better than the Warriors. What about the rest of the teams? I mean, Clippers just got James Harden. We we have no idea how that's going to pan out yet because the trade be just determined. happened not even 24 hours ago. I'm going to say no. And now we got the Lakers too. You're going to say no, Vic? Yeah, I think Warriors are going to be better than the Clippers. We did see the Warriors struggle last year too during the regular season though. On the road especially. I don't know, man. The Clippers. Nah, I think they I look like... good on paper. I, I'm I'm not buying in yet. Yeah, it's it's hard to. I agree. It's hard to buy in on the Clippers. I'd say the Warriors, right now, four or so games into the season, are better than the Clippers. But that's that could change easily. Easily, that's one that can change. What's the Lakers? How are we feeling? How are we feeling about the Lakers? So, how are we feeling better? about the league? Well, the Lakers beat the Warriors last year in the playoffs. Yeah, but I, so how much better I, I are they? It's a completely know? different team, though. I would say the Lakers got a little bit better than the Warriors did with the additions that they added. On paper, yeah, but, but honestly, I think really that would be. A, Davis. I think that would be a good series again, dude. It would. It was a great series last year, and then this year, I feel like it would really. With with Kaminga and Moody stepping up this year, and GP two. Was G GP two wasn't there last year when they played? Was he or was he? Yes, he was. He got traded at the deadline back to the Warriors. Okay, so I guess GP two was there. I think those two role players alone impact a series. Obviously, the Lakers did get a lot of role players too, but I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like that's one that could go either way as well. I I think I'm gonna take Lakers. I think the Lakers are the better team right now. Um. But never count Curry out, as, as you know, as all of us know. Never count Curry out. I'm gonna take the Lakers right now, though. I think Lakers are still looking to build that chemistry together. It just does not seem like they're not all there yet. You know, when when they were in the playoffs last year, they were locked in. It just does not seem like with all the additions right now that they haven't figured it out yet. That Darvin Ham doesn't know. Not that, that he doesn't know, but like he hasn't figured out what lineups to throw out at every team yet with all these new additions of the players that he got. And then Gabe Vincent has been struggling as well, too. I, I know we've said it a lot, but, you know, that that issue of the chemistry and, and not being able to work well within an offensive system comes down mainly to the fault of like LeBron and, and kind of that, that that staff on the Lakers, in my opinion. I just think that when you switch up a lineup as many times as they have and when you basically establish that every other player other than the the three, four, and five spots are, are completely tradable and, and you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do, you you lose that incentive that a lot of players have to to build a chemistry bond or, and like an on-court chemistry with, with their teammates, especially when your teammate is probably the one who might trade you away. I think that... I think that for me, when I look at the last few years 
and kind of where the Kings have been, where the Clippers have been, where the Lakers have been, and then where the Warriors have been, they have the better resume. And even though, you know, we can sit here and say, oh, the Kings could have beaten the Warriors last year, and obviously the Lakers did beat the Warriors last year, it, it kind of comes down to, in the, in the Kings case, they didn't at the end of the day. Could they beat them this year? Possibly, but my opinion personally, I still think that the Warriors will just have that better experience and have that, you know, insane level of chemistry and offensive ball that we've seen from the Warriors time after time. And it's going to be hard to defend. We'll probably see a shootout between two of the best offensive teams, maybe in the entire West. Not including the Nuggets. Not including the Nuggets, but... But yeah, I think it'll be a good series, but I still I still like the Warriors over the Kings. I like them over the Clippers and I like them over the Lakers. It's just we haven't seen like this Clippers team do anything together, really. And yeah. until we see I'll put uh, them again you know, above the Clippers too. Uh, until we see something come into fruition with that team, you know, we we can't sit here and say that the reigning four-time champions are are somehow worse than the second team in LA. And then as for the Kings, I think I've already made that point. So the verdict is better than Clippers, worse than Lakers, worse than Kings. Is that, is that majority here? That's what I would say. Yeah. So third best in California. I'd say, I'd say fourth, fourth is a little bit of a stretch from Chuck there. But I think it's it's not a crazy it's it's not a crazy saying. I think you could even argue that there too. Who'd you say one or who who'd you say number one is? In in California? Yeah. I was asking Miles. Oh, sorry. Okay. Because I I he's he seemed like he had the list out. No, I don't I don't deciding between the Lakers and the Kings is a whole separate thing, Mm -hmm. but I didn't I didn't put much effort into that. We could debate that if you want. I was just saying that. (laughs) Okay. Well, I was just saying, I think they're both better than the Warriors right now. I think the Lakers are very close with them right now. Mm -hmm. That's soon to be seen. But I think the Kings, I think the Kings are a better team this year overall. Between the Kings and the Lakers, that's going to require some thinking. I want to say my my gut is telling me kings but the inexperience plays a huge factor in playoff success and i think if the kings went up against the lakers i think it would go to seven and i think i would take the lakers but i think it's very close i i will (laughs) calling the lakers the best team in california is crazy though it just doesn't sound right i feel like that one could go either way all right, I, I want to hear what you guys think. Let me let me put some thought into it. You put me on the spot. Go ahead and debate it. I'll, I'll, you'll get back to me, all right? You'll get back to me. I think, honestly, the gap between all these four teams really is not that big. I feel like that's why we're all just having such like a struggle saying who the best is. But we all know who's better than who. But saying, okay, this team is the best. Because even if we did determine that the Kings are better than the Lakers, Clippers, and Warriors, it still feels, it still feels weird saying that the Kings are better than the team that have LeBron James and Steph Curry and then Paul George Kawhi and James Harden on them. And Westbrook. But at the same time, yeah, sure. Go he's ahead. He's done you, that you twice now. He's done that because he said stars <laughs> on the Clippers. Like, you know, he's like getting rid of their stars and the Clippers and Westbrook. Okay. Yeah. So, so Westbrook's a star. Is that what you're trying to say? Fuck. Yeah. He's a lot yeah. better. He's a lot yeah. better than he was on the Lakers. We'll see. Yeah. That. You're on your, you're off your fucking rocker. That's what you are, Daniel. He's on the, he's on the seventy-five list. Okay, that, was he, was that because of his time in fucking LA, the Lakers and the Clippers or Houston? Yeah, there you go. I forgot he was on Houston. That's that. Those years of NBA basketball all were so irrelevant. That he, all I remember from that time is when he when he was doing his thing on the bench between the legs and him and Harden were joking around. And then like the next day, dude was gone. <laughs> he was out of Houston. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. But yeah, I, I feel like just like what I was getting at is that the gap between these these four teams in California is not far at all. Honestly, it might just depend on who's having the better game on the night when they're playing with each other. 
And to me, I just feel like the Kings are really heading towards the right direction. They're a very young team that found success early with their core. And they're only going to get better. And they're aging, but they're not aging in the wrong direction. They're aging in the right direction. They have a very young team. You Warriors can only have age an average... in one direction, but I know what you mean. Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> the Warriors and Lakers are aging in the wrong direction. I mean, LeBron being the oldest player in the league. The Warriors having the oldest average age and starting lineup in the NBA. A team has never won with an average age starting lineup 33 and a half. I don't think it'll happen this year. But yeah, it's 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 really hard to say which team is the best, but I feel like right now we can determine at this very moment who is better than who, if that makes sense. No, yeah, very well said. I guess yeah. it's another... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Kev, or Victor. No, I was just going to say, I think... For sure, it's Clippers last, just because we haven't seen them play yet. Warriors, Kings, and Lakers, like Kevin said, is just there. I think those three are just very tied closely together, and it's it would be weird saying that like the Kings are better than a team with LeBron and AD or a team with Curry, Clay, and Dre, and CP three. I I think also too just to also you know this this conversation that we're having uh, another thing that you have to kind of separate is what I was thinking about is what the word best means just because when you look at what of those four teams has the necessary building blocks and and what looks the healthiest and the most you know good in every way like if you're a fan of this team you're like oh we're going into the season we look like a really good team um, then I would say probably uh, the Kings and then followed by maybe there's a, okay. Basically what I'm trying to say is there's a difference between the best at what their team looks like going into this regular season and what team we think will end up being the best out of those three at the end. And and those two things are very different because then when you talk about who's going to be the best at the end of the season, you're talking about who had, you know, experience when it mattered in the playoffs and, and, you know, who got farther, who remained the healthiest and was able to have a winning season too. Like all these things start to come into play. But when we talk about who looks the best going into this season, I think that's kind of where we're all in agreement that maybe, um, you know, Kings are, are kind of at the top of that list. This, this is such a debate, man. I'm honestly like, I feel like my mind changes it like every three minutes, just thinking about it. Who's the best out of those three teams. I feel like the only reason why I wouldn't say the King is the Kings is lack of experience, but I feel like they definitely have a lot of better experience now playing the Warriors in the first round of their playoffs. Yeah. I, uh, last season, I definitely didn't think that the Kings were going to beat the Warriors in the first round, but as the series went on, they went up to an O and I was like, Oh shit. Like they very much might. But then after they went up 2-0, you kind of saw that inexperience kick in in the final moments of the game and being able to close out a series. But I feel like this year, the story just isn't really going to be the same if they were to meet up again. That's true. It, I guess this isn't this isn't worth much, but I will say it. Um, Golden State did just beat them. So for whatever yeah. that's worth in the regular season. <laughs> yep. With I'll, about I'll, seventy-six games left, I'll, I'll say it's. I'll say this: it's. It's about as worth it to say as it was for Bleacher Report to post that the Warriors and the Lakers were the only winless team <laughs> with after two the games first, the after the first game. No, no, no! Bro. It wasn't even two games in the season. It was before day two of the NBA season, before the yeah. game started. It was at like it was at like noon the very next day. <laughs> That's insane, dude. The only win there must have been, winless teams. There must have been no news that day, bro. <laughs> they ran out of content. And I don't think there they, yeah, that's, that's real shit what it is. Yeah, that's insane. That is crazy. Yeah. Hey, but we know that's the struggle. How you know it's bad. We we know we know the struggle of finding content. Yeah, but I don't think we would ever do something like that. I feel like we make it work, man. I feel like our off-season content was fire. Some of yeah, it. yeah. We had some unique we didn't ideas. Take, we didn't take it that far, but we also ranked NBA rappers dickheads. <laughs> hey, I'm I was still all for the Shaquille O'Neal Ben Wallace boxing match. I feel like that topic would have been fire, bro. As a bonus topic, hey, but... it's not even a debate. Cap, 
It's not even a debate. It's not. Miles, Cal Shaq Carson. is a very big human. Shaq we could is put a very someone, big human. We could put someone else in Shaq's spot. We could do like Ben Wallace, Andre Drummond. I still think Ben, I have ben Wallace. Debate. Ben Wallace, yeah, Carl ben Malone. Wallace ben Wallace. Yeah, Carl Malone and Ben Wallace, I think, would be a good fight. Ben Wallace and Giannis. Like David, how about David Robinson, Giannis boxing match? That would be crazy. I feel I'm gonna like say David Robinson. David Robinson. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say David Robinson. Robinson. That boy, was, that boy was in the Navy, man. <laughs> he would, he would have thrown the meanest. Dude, like... He was so jacked, bro. Yeah, dude, he was, he was huge. huge. But and, so, but so and was he Giannis did time in the military. But so Giannis, yeah, did Giannis, Giannis did too. Giannis did too in the Greek. No, he did not like David Robinson, bro. In the Greek military, he had to. He served. I yeah, guess he right, wasn't so, like on the front line, but was David Robinson on the front you're line? You're telling me that they made that man climb a uh, a ladder? You're telling me they made all <laughs> all whatever height that man is climb a ladder or do All right. But a seven, but a but a 7 day series of America versus Greek at war who's winning? We got America obviously. So I feel like David Robinson just might be a little bit tougher with the experience and training that he went through. And it was in the 90s. That's true. That is a good point. Or 80s whenever the hell he did it. A hey, Vic, you might you might cut this out, you might leave it. This is up to you, but I need your guys' opinion real quick. Just just the name. I don't need I don't need to know anything else. Don't be biased. Who do you think benches more? Grant Williams or Giannis? Who do you think bench presses more weight? I'm personally going Grant Williams. And I'd like to hear what you guys think. Just the name. No explanation. Just tell me who you think bench presses more weight. Just off a of rip when you asked me that, I immediately thought Grant Williams. I don't know why. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna say Grant Williams too, actually. I'll say Grant. And okay. I'm gonna I was gonna say something else, but you told me not to. I'm really glad Thank you me. guys agree with that take because a lot of people like to say Giannis and it's just not true. It's just not true. Dude's seven foot. Do you know how much range of motion that is? I was gonna say I the only reason why I was gonna say Giannis is because the way you brought that question up, like, oh shit, maybe it is Giannis. But just upon initial thinking, like Grant Williams has a lot shorter arms. He's tubbier, so he can probably push more weight than Giannis. Okay, thank you. I was going to say, too, you just got to look at the pectoral muscles. Because, like, Giannis is very skinny. He's very narrow. If he had man tits, I'd be like, oh, Giannis. But... All right, introducing a new segment to the podcast. We're going to be adding, can you guess that caption? So I got an Instagram caption from uh, a couple NBA players, and you guys are going to have to – Try and guess where these captions came from. So the first one's gonna be pull up. They like there go and be fresh as I could be. Say that shit again. Pull up. They like there go and be fresh as I could be. John Morant. Can can I ask you a question or no? Just it's yeah. got to be a young guy. It's got to be a young guy. Okay, yeah, is is, is it a currently active NBA player? These are sorry, all okay. Current. No, no, no. So, yeah, no, no, no. That 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 doesn't make sense, bro. This ain't no Q and A. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yes. know. What the fuck? Right. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Carl Malone. <laughs> you know, what? what the fuck? <laughs> I'm gonna say Zion or Ja. Dylan Brooks. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go D book. No. Nah. Eastern Conference. Joel Embiid. Point um, guard. Okay, Here, Eastern Conference point guard. I'm going to say it again. There's something in there that w- literally like kind of okay, gives okay, it yeah. away. Is it that MB thing? Yes. That's why pull I said up, Embiid. Pull up, they like, there go MB. Fresh as I could be. Oh, MB. Miles Bridges. Wait, no. Are they in the East? That was, that was no, a close that's the guess. West, isn't it? Mikhail Bridges? No, that's, no. That's, I was going to say. Hold on, hold on. Hold Fuck. On. It's not Mikhail Bridges? Holy shit. It ain't Miles. It ain't Mikhail. I want to say Malcolm, but hold on. Malcolm Brogdon. No, uh, he's no. on the Blazers. That's West. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. All right. It, it kind of sucks because it's an abbreviated of his name. No, we know. Yeah, because it's MB. So it's M. Like, yeah. No, like his actual name doesn't start with L or M. Almost gave it away. <laughs> His nickname starts with M. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Emmanuel quickly. That was a bad guess. That was a fucking terrible guess. Marcus, nope. Marcus Smart's in the West now. Uh, it's gotta be a nickname, so it's gotta be like Megatron or fucking. No, I was like thinking Magic something, it, but it's his. It's his like name shortened. 
if that makes sense. You take out the two first words, and then it's his name. Okay, okay, okay. Were, were they a playoff team? Are, were they a playoff team? Hell no. <laughs> wait, wait. It's got to be someone from the Magic. Is, are they on the Magic? Nope. Okay, give it to me, man. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Mellow Ball. Oh. Oh. Fuck did we not see, get that? Uh, yeah. That sucks. How did we? I feel not stupid. Get that? I feel so. I feel stupid now, bro. That's bro, good. That's good. How yeah, did we good. not do that? Fuck. MB. All right. I was Here's gonna a... ask you too. I was like, did you make this stupidly hard? But like, we could have gotten that one. That was good. Yeah. yeah. That, that we could. Yeah. Damn. Damn. All right. Th- this one's a little bit harder. Oh this... well, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Monday to Sunday, every day is Tuesday. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Give Dude, us the t- hint off the bat. Give us the yeah. hint off the bat. You, very young team. I think they might have the youngest team in the NBA. I got to fact check that, bro. Okay, I'm gonna so say it's J- on Houston. Jalen Green? No, it's not the Rockets. Damn. Paolo Bancaro. Ooh, Thunder, oh. Shet. Probably it's thunder. Shy. It okay, but he didn't say no to thunder, so it's probably SGA. shy. SGA, yeah, it's sh- let's go. SGA. <laughs> Every day is Tuesday. Does that mean like like buckets? Yeah. Like two? No, his, like, that... his jersey number is two. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's right. That's a good that makes one. sense. That's a good one. I like that. All right, this is this is the next one. Let him know zero. Man, that's a lame ass caption. That is a little mass caption, but it's Damian Lillard. We know. No, I'm just kidding. It's not Damian Lillard. That was a good um, guess. Westbrook. Like no. Is Westbrook? Oh, Tatum. It's got to be Tatum. Yeah, it's Tatum. Yeah, Tatum yeah. easy. Yeah. All right, this one is gonna be fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seven free. Jalen Brown. Seven. No, it's a seven no. three player. It's a seven. No, three. seven free. Like right, free. but it's a, he is he seven three. Is he playing off of seven free or no? He is. He is tall. Okay. Seven over seven foot. Porzingis. No. Is it Wemby? It can't be Wemby. No. Current player, right? That was close though. Yeah, these are all can't, current can't, players. Can't be Wemby. Chat this time. Mitchell Robinson. Yep. Let's yep. go. Okay. Who is it? Yeah. Who is Chat. it? Ah. Oh. Hell yeah! I got one. All right, I need I need to give one Vic. All right, and I want to get I want to get the wording exactly right. This is a current player, and this is the tweet. Everybody has God given talents. Mine just so happens to be slanging this wood in my pants. J.R. Smith. <laughs> nope. Dude, I... current player, current player, current player. Wood. In my pants. Okay, yeah, he is Eastern Conference guard. Was it? Is it Dame Lillard? It is not Damian Lillard. It, it, was it, it Dennis can't Smith be... Junior? No, it was an... Dennis Smith Junior. Wow. How the Bro, fuck did you what? know that? It was Dennis swear Smith Junior. To... <laughs> hey, I swear to God, for some reason that just like popped into my head, and I was like, Dennis I, Smith, like, Dennis Jr. Smith Junior. <laughs> like I thought of like a ra- you said it has to be a random Eastern Conference guard, and that was the first one I thought of. Yeah, and, I wasn't yeah. gonna guess that. That and, was a good ass guess, dude. Damn. If you see this part of the podcast, drop two words, Kevin's drip for a ten dollar Visa gift card or a ten dollar Fat Dan's gift card, the sponsor of season two of Good Morning Let's Basketball. So an interesting decision by the Lakers has been made very early on in the season, and that is pertaining to LeBron's minutes. So they are electing to limit LeBron James to playing only 28 to 30 minutes a game. Could the Lakers still find success with his limited minutes? My idea and thought behind this is absolutely not. For the simple fact of the gap of playmaking that is made when LeBron is on and off the court. We know we know Anthony Davis is that X factor for the Lakers and they did add a lot of great pieces, but Limiting the greatest player of all time to me just seems kind of silly. I don't know if they're doing, I don't know if this is just like an early season thing or when they get to the playoffs, they're going to kind of take off those shackles, but they need a win now. 
they need to find get a comp, get a couple win streak, get some good wins under their belt now, even though it is a long season, yeah, but also find a good standing spot for when they do make the playoffs so they can play the I'll say the easiest team possible. I don't think any team's going to be easy to play because of how good the West is, but you need to have LeBron James out there. So I don't know what Darvin Ham is really thinking with limiting LeBron to 28 to 30 minutes a game. The other night, they did play the Kings, and Le- they went into OT, and LeBron actually did play 39 minutes, and he had 38 points, and they still lost. Which, so... Kings number one confirmed beat Warriors and Lakers. Yeah. So that, that, that really solves the conversation we had earlier. But, like... I just don't really understand what the logic behind that is. LeBron has been a very sustainable player his whole entire career. He's still moving great. Yeah, he's the oldest player in the league, but he's not acting like it. He's not playing like it. So I don't really know what the logic is to limiting him to only 28 to 30 minutes a game. When you know that he could still play at a very high level with high minutes. He's officially the oldest now? Yeah. I believe yeah. so. Wow. Because who retired? And and he took the throne away from him. Haslam. You don't Giannis have Haslam. I I wanted to say I don't think the Lakers can afford to keep LeBron on the bench for all of the reasons that Kevin said, but also because I don't think that they focused enough on having another player on that team that can take a, a strong leadership role. I understand that, you know, AD is obviously another superstar there that is great for the team, but he's not he, because of his position, he's not in a capacity where he can really take over a team and kind of take that leadership role of like, okay, come on, guys, like we're going to win this game. Usually those kind of come from, I feel like, the first through third positions, which is why LeBron runs the floor. Personally, that's what I think. And so I just think that because they haven't really tried to get anyone else like that on that team, and anyone that they have had, they've either gotten rid of and brought back or just gotten rid of. So, yeah, I, I think that, you know, they just haven't had that enough of uh, a focus on that area of their team. And because of that, LeBron needs to be on the floor. If when he's not, like Kevin said, they just they lose games, then they're not playing to their full potential. And, you know, that's just one. I mean, the chem- we've talked about, it, you know, the chemistry on that team is already so depleted taking away what would be the hub is is detrimental to them. Honestly, man, <laughs> not a lot of further thoughts. I mean, the logic makes sense. He's like, we just confirmed he's the oldest player in the league. A minute restriction is inevitably going to help him stay nimble, stay healthy during the long season. But I do think 28 to 30 is not enough. I would personally up that to like 35. 30 is not enough when you have Cam Reddish playing minutes. And that's my personal take. Watching that guy play basketball really fucking hurts. But I think that's that's something that people don't take into account is how it's going to affect him on defense because I feel like that's where he's going to be wearing himself out the most. I say that and he did just drop 38 points, but I feel like throughout the entire season it's – it's he's becoming I'm not going to say he's a liability yet, but he's he's starting to get there, I think, personally. And that's just that's just eye test. So that could be debated easily. But just from what I've seen this season, it's it's hard to see him giving it his all on defense every game. So what do we think if and when Anthony Davis goes down with injury, though? Do we still feel like that minute restriction will still be in place? Because if it is, then, you know, just piss on the season at that point. No, um, I mean, I I think they're gonna take that shit off right when AD gets hurt. There, that's he he's their next best option. LeBron, he needs to be on the floor if AD goes down. For sure. And notice how we didn't say if AD goes down. We said when, because it's just based on history. I've been saying that for a minute. So early on in the season, we've seen some teams struggling and teams doing well. We've also seen some star players looking like they're going to have a breakout season. One that came to my mind right away was Tyrese Maxey of the Philadelphia 76ers. He's starting the season averaging 30 points, six rebounds, and six assists. He's really getting into that role of that second option role with James Harden not being there and now James Harden actually being traded. So... 
I really liked Tyrese Maxey a lot last year. I think he had a very good season last year, kind of being that third option for Philly. More so even being, I'd probably even at that point call him the second scoring option last year. But then again, you know, they did have James Harden who averaged 20, but Maxey wasn't too far behind that. But now that he's not there, he seems a lot more confident. He knows how to get to his spots. Very good shooter. He attacks very well downhill. The fact that he, I was very surprised when I saw he's averaging 36 and six. Like to me, that kind of blows my mind. Yes, it is three games into the season, but I don't believe he's had a game yet where he scored less than 30 points. I think last game he might have had 28. But even then, it seems like he's really buying into that role. Yeah, Maxi, Maxi for sure is an up and coming star. Personally, I'm going to go a little younger because I feel like this is Maxi's breakout season. But I feel like someone that is either going to have his breakout season this year or next year, my Daniel's favorite player, Devin Vassell. Devin Vassell has been going crazy, man. And I feel like he did just drop 14 points last game. Let's not get to I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that is against the Clippers defense. We do know they are a solid defensive team, but 23 points, 25 points. This guy is going to step up. I think he's going to be a 30-point-per-game scorer, especially now that they have Wembenyama drawing in so much attention, and they have Keldon Johnson on their roster too. I feel like Vassell can really start to grow. We know that he can flat-out score the ball. Obviously, the playmaking needs some work as a guard, but I think I think this guy is going to be good. I think, I think Daniel hit it on the head, even though he Googled his, his answer back back in the day but he was right he's panning out and i think that when Benyama finally being drafted to the spurs is really going to give a lot of people him grow as a player but you could tell i feel like he's damn near if not if not their main option second option on this team right now when Benyama, i feel like will eventually be that but right now they are they're doing a lot with Vassell. they're letting him handle it so yeah watching that first game I cannot remember who they the first game they had against Dallas. Mm-hmm. You know, I tuned in for Wemby, as I'm sure 99% of America did, other than maybe Devin Vassell's mother. But watching that game, I was like, yo, holy shit. Like, this dude's actually, like, balling right now. He was getting to his spots. He was knocking down the mid-range. He was hitting threes. He had an insane fast break dunk. Kid is very athletic. I think we could see him be a very good player this year for San Antonio, possibly this being his breakout year. And so San Antonio, honestly, all around just looked very impressive that first game against Dallas. Extremely young team. It seems like they have a lot of talent. They have Kelvin Johnson as well, obviously, Wemby. They have Zach Collins, who I feel like it was a very good pickup for them. So that kind of takes a lot of like the defensive workload off of Wemby Yama, not having to guard those bigger, more physical centers. I was not trying to get at Zach Collins being a fire pickup, making them a contender. So I'm glad you, you let me finish. Classes. <laughs> so, so I noticed you did that. So I feel like I had to reiterate why I said Zach Collins was a good pickup. They picked him up to take that defensive load off of Wemby to guard bigger centers. And it's working. Mm-hmm. Zach Collins is a big dude. Gets in there, gets some boards. It's about it. But, you know. Wemby Yama shoots a lot of threes too, man. He did. He banked three of them his first game, though. The last, I remember he subbed in the last six minutes of the fourth quarter against Dallas, and he scored like nine straight points. I was like, holy shit. Him, it makes Collins fit a lot better it with Wembenyama shooting that much. But he, stretch, he stretches a lot more than I thought he was going to. I definitely didn't think he was going to be playing down low in the mid range area a lot more, especially his rookie year. They're definitely going to wait for him to size up a little bit more. But I definitely like what San Antonio is doing, I like what they have going on. A lot of young prospects and young talent. So I think in a few years, we can see this team be incredibly solid. Rip the okay. homie Josh Primo, though. They could have been even better, but bro had to sling his shit. It's fucked up. <clears throat> it's fucked up. Do they look a hell of a lot better than they did last year? The Spurs team, just I, watching them play against the Mavericks, I thought they looked really good and they kept up with them the whole game. And honestly, they, they just had, like, really good ball movement watching them play. And they're a quick team, too, on the fast break. And I, I just think they're going to be a team to watch for the next couple of years. One thing I wanted to say really quick on the Vassell thing is th- the reason why I picked him, when I was doing my research for that topic, I knew I wanted to go with a player that was in the shadow of another really good player. 
And then I started to watch the, the tapes of kind of the players that were on the Spurs because I had established that Wemby was coming in and he was going to take the spotlight away from anyone, everyone. And I know you hate to hear his name, Miles, but don't talk looking, about Kyrie. What, what I was looking for was a reverse Ben Simmons situation, which was, you know, this kind of opportunity for a great player to be in a position where he wasn't immediately held to the standard of greatness. Right. He, he came into that team with the expectation all falling on on Wemby. And so, he, he, you know, he kind of comes in with this. I'm not going to say chip on his shoulder, but this ability to say, I want to take over this team and I want to be the, the, the guy that everyone talks about when when they look at the Spurs team. Now, whether, you know, Wemby will outshine him and, and whether how that dynamic is going to work out. I said personally that I think that him, I think that Wemby and Devin Vassell will make a great one two punch. But you know, I, I just kind of wanted to say that, really. It's time think... to put Ben Simmons in our in our banner picture. He's he's officially our player mascot for this channel. He makes it into every podcast at some point. Do you guys think that Devin Vassell could be a great, <sighs> most improved candidate player this year? Mm, I don't see I why like... not. I feel like there's players out there that are just overall better, and I feel like are just going to have a better jump, kind of like uh, Jordan Poole. Yeah. A Possibly lot of people pop- have him and Maxi as their front runners. Maxi, too, Maxie. because yeah. right now he's literally a 30-point-per-game scorer, and last year I don't even think he averaged 20. So just the jump that he took is just – if you made it this far into the podcast, I would like you to go down and comment Miles Chain. And the first person I see, I will ship you Miles Chain that I ripped straight off his neck at the bar this weekend. That's crazy. At the bar, at the bar this weekend. What's crazier? What's crazier is when I ripped it off, you didn't do a fucking thing. You let me have it. All right. If you made you it this it. far, I will personally offer you a $20 Visa gift card if you comment Kevin's bucket hat under next video. I will go into Kevin's house, take that shitty bucket hat, and I will send it to you personally and do all of us as co-hosts a favor so he doesn't have to wear it anymore. Oh. You'll do Back nothing. You'll, you actually, you'll, you'll do what you're told, pussy. Everyone, welcome Clay Josephoski to the pod, a.k.a. Pinhead Larry. Welcome, Pinhead. Oh, buddy doesn't like I have his chain, no. <laughs> yeah, keep, fucking, that, keep that $4 fucking, Amazon this, chain. This, this this tin foil ass chain. My Go hands are green. The shower. My hands Go are green already. Shower. My hands are green already. <laughs> All right, guys. Next episode, we're doing a is it real gold or not test on Miles' chain. We're gonna drop it in fucking a bathtub and see if it turns green. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Good Morning Let's Basketball. We're very excited to kick off season two for you guys. Make sure you guys tune in next week for a brand new episode. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok at Good Morning Less Basketball. And if you are listening on Spotify and Apple Music, please be sure to leave us a rate. It'll help us out a lot. Until next time.